Coming up on this week's Diz Pod, we roll out some new features this week in Disney history, Disney Character Spotlight, we go through Disney Parks blog news, and Aaron from Our Disney World Fix, and I relive the anniversary of three years ago when Magic Kingdom closed due to COVID. That's all coming up next on the Diz Pod. I'm the goat of Disney. I eat everything. All right, everybody, it's Corey story time. So kick back, relax, put your feet up, and get ready to listen to this one. We're not just going to report Disney news and just talk about it. I mean, that's already been done a million times. But then again, we do love Disney news. We will talk about some. So Tammy has me running all over Disney World looking for this new lounge fly. Jillian loves China so much that if she was ever lost, she would need a tag on her shirt that says, if lost, return me to China. Jacob's my dude. Jacob is my tech man. He makes me sound good. Sometimes when I do a re-listen of a released podcast, uh, I hear some mistakes here and there. And in our first, go figure, right? In our very first time doing This Week in Disney History, I literally said March. I mean May. So from there... Enjoy. Every time I say March, just say May. I am always evolving. I am like Epcot in that sense where I set up, you know, a set of ideas, you know, if I'm just talking in life, but if I'm talking about the channel, you know, I'll have an idea and I roll with it and either I feel like I came up with something later on that's better or maybe it's not working Whatever it is, I'm always ever-changing things, and I've had some other ideas for working in a different, um, would you say, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, Not outline, but uh, format. I'm looking for format. So there's certain things that I wanted to work in, and uh, we're going to try it. I think these are things that will easily stick. Now, I like a format because it makes it easier to put content out no matter what and be consistent. So, in other words, content like we're going to add some things where I want to talk about a story or two or three, whatever I feel like uh, at Disney um, International Parks. You know, let's talk about the Asia Parks. Let's talk about Paris. Um, I'd like to do a segment where we do that. We always do our attraction feature content. Character Spotlight is a new one that I would like to touch on each week. And, of course, food, whenever we do eat food, which is most of the time. Things like that. So sometimes if there's a segment that's not there, it's just because I thought for that particular pod that whatever I'm including is better that week or that's these things are kind of like they're great but sometimes they're filler only in the sense that maybe i had a great conversation with a guest and it went long and i have to cut something then that's okay you know these these things will ever be evolving so Happy to unroll some or roll out some new things this week. I am going to kick that off with this day in Disney history, coming from this day in DisneyHistory.com. So I'm not going to read everything that happened on each day, but because this is a weekly podcast, I'm going to touch on some interesting things. Let's go Monday through Sunday. So this will be starting on. March 3rd, starting in 1913, on March 3rd, Disney comic artist Manuel Gonzalez is born in Zamora, Spain. He is responsible for several short animated stories and on the motion picture of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. In 1928, Walt Disney, still visiting New York, continues to renegotiate a deal for the third day in a row 
with Charles Mintz of Winkler Productions for the next series of Oswald cartoons. Mintz once again raises his offer from the day before to $1,800 per film plus 50% of the profits, but now Mintz also wishes to take over the Disney studio, paying Walt and Roy $200 a week as, he's, as his employees. Walt absolutely refuses. In 1934, Disney releases the Mickey Mouse short Playful Pluto. It's where Pluto pesters Mickey while doing his house cleaning. In 1937, Bobby Driscoll, the voice of Peter Pan and model in the 1953 Disney classic, is born in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He also appeared in the live-action Disney features as the 1950 Treasure Island, playing the role of Jim Hawkins. Uh, The... 1948, So Dear to My Heart as Jeremiah, and the 1946 Song of the South as Johnny. In 1964, Teddy Newton, an artist, writer, director, and voice actor at Pixar Animation Studios, is born in Encino, California. Newton co-wrote the short Jack-Jack Attack as well as did the voices of multiple characters in movies such as The Incredibles, Ratatouille, WALL-E, Up, and Toy Story 3. His directional debut was Day and Night, which he was nominated an Oscar for Best Animated Short Film. In 1983, the Epcot attraction Journey into Imagination debuts. It will have its original or official opening two days later. So, let's see. That's the third technically the fifth it opened so i am going to be at epcot that day we must not forget this and we must ride figment on its anniversary date its birthday how about that let's do the math 1983 that is whoa 40 years it's 40 years 40 years for figment how about that The third was also, in 1995, the Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye attraction officially opens in Disneyland's Adventureland. In 2018, actor David Ogden Steers passes away in Oregon at age 75. He voiced a number of Disney characters during the 1990s and 2000s, mostly notable Cogsworth in 1991's Beauty and the Beast, Governor Ratcliffe and Wiggins in the 1995 Pocahontas, and Dr. Jukiba in 2002's Lilo and Stitch. Now on to March 4th. This day in history, 1932, administrator and Disney legend Frank Wells is born in Coronado, California. In September 1984, he joined the Walt Disney Company as its president and chief operating officer. He served as president of the Walt Disney Company until his untimely death in 1994. Wells played a major role in the turnaround of Disney after he was recruited in 1984, along with Michael D. Eisner the company's chairman and chief executive. Wells, known for adhering to a strict work regimen that began at 6 a.m., he handled the details of Disney's day-to-day operations, but was often overshadowed in the public eye by the more colorful Eisner. Before his tenure with Disney, Wells worked for Warner Brothers. In 1972, the Country Bear Jamboree, a stage show with audio animatronic figurines or figures, opens up at Disneyland. Originally intended by Walt to be placed at Disney's Mineral King Ski Resort in California, which he was trying to build in the 1960s. The first Country Bear Jamboree opened its doors in Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World in October 1971. It received so much good feedback that Imagineers immediately planned a replica of it and placed it at Disneyland's Critter Country. The attraction will 
entertained Disneyland guests for nearly 30 years before closing in 2001. In 2020, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, a dark ride attraction, opens at Disney's Hollywood Studios in the Walt Disney Resort. It is the first ride at any Disney park that stars Mickey Mouse and Friends. And boy, when that happened, I just simply said, it's about time that the mouse gets his own ride. Isn't that crazy? March 5th. In 1928, Disney's Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, black and white, silent short rival Romeos, is released just as Walt has exhausted negotiations with the cartoon's distributor, Charles Mintz. In 2019, Star Wars Path of the Jedi reopens in Disneyland. First opening in 2015 and closing in 2018, the Tomorrowland attraction now takes guests on a journey through the history of the Force and the Skywalker family. A 10-minute montage, Path of the Jedi takes iconic images and dialogue from the saga and stitches them together thematically instead of chronologically. In 1963, various versions of the song There's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow, written by Richard M. and Robert B. Sherman, are recorded for a Disney attraction that will be featured in the upcoming New York World's Fair. Disney staff composer Buddy Baker has arranged the tune in different musical styles to fit the Carousel of Progress, an attraction to be featured in the General Electric Pavilion. In 1982, Disney's 1979 science fiction feature The Black Hole is released into U.S. theaters for a second time. First released in December 1979, the film is directed by Gary Nelson for Walt Disney Productions and stars Maximilian Schell, Robert Forster, Joseph Bottoms, Yvette Mimieu, Anthony Perkins, and Ernest Borgnine. In 1993, the single version of A Whole New World, which plays over Aladdin's end credits, peaks at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. A duet sung by Peebo Bryson and Regina Bell, it will sell 600,000 copies domestically. In 2006, Give Kids the World, a nonprofit organization dedicated to fulfilling the dreams of children with life threatening illnesses, such as visiting Disney World and other Florida attractions celebrates their 20th anniversary. A week-long celebration kicks off at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom with actor and Disney fan John Stamos, a longtime friend of Give Kids the World. March 7th, 1942, Michael Eisner, who ran the Walt Disney Company from 1984 to 2005, is born in Mount Kisco, New York, though he was raised in New York City. Prior to joining Disney, Eisner was president and chief operating officer of Paramount Pictures Corporation. 2008, in a ceremony prior to the park's opening, Disney legend Bob Gurr receives a window on Disneyland's Main Street USA. Gurr's Disneyland designs include the Autotopia, the Monorail, Omni Movers, and the Main Street Vehicles. Wrapping up this week in history, we move to March 8th. Hey, that's my brother's birthday.
In 2006, actress Rhonda Williams, the voice of Drizella in Disney's 1950 animated Cinderella, passes away at 75 in Oregon. Williams was also the voice and model for the audio animatronic mother and teenage daughter at the General Electric Carousel of Progress at Disneyland from 1964 to 1973. A star of radio, television, and movies, Williams appeared on such programs as Dragnet, Ironside, The Twilight Zone, and Marcus Welby, M.D. In 2019, Captain Marvel, a superhero film produced by Marvel Studios and distributed by Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures, is released in U.S. theaters. That's going to do it for This Week in History, one of our newest, coolest features. Thinking about wanting to live near Disney? With over a decade of helping people find the home of their dreams, Victor is the perfect realtor of La Rosa Realty Horizons to help you find the home of your dreams. Go to DisneyAtYourDoorstep.com. That's DisneyAtYourDoorstep.com. So if you're interested to moving near the magic, once again, contact Victor Naraki at DisneyAtYourDoorstep.com and let him know that Living in Diz sent you. Dipping in on an article from March 31st, 2023, we're looking at the headline, Five of the Top Ways Disney World Celebrated the 50th Anniversary. This was written by Chelsea Eagle, Senior Manager of Communications at Walt Disney World Resort. She starts the article with, I wouldn't normally celebrate the end of a party, but... As the world's most magical celebration honoring the 50 years of Walt Disney World Resort officially winds down, I am just exhilarated about the next 50 years of our history. This celebration was so much more than just a moment in time. It was history in the making. And wow, it was unforgettable. It's almost overwhelming to remember it all. So here are my top five memories from this iconic celebration. Number one, cast members at the heart of the celebration. Our cast members are truly the heart of our magic, so naturally they were key to this anniversary celebration too. I loved all the ways cast members were recognized over the past 18 months, and each moment of recognition felt more special than the last. My personal favorite moment for cast? It was actually thousands of little pop-up moments created by our Pixie Patrol, They surprised cast members across property with more than 70,000 iridescent prizes throughout the celebration. That is amazed is right there. Number two, sparkling iridescent decor and lights. As the iridescent decor starts to come down this weekend, including the phased remodel of those beautiful 50th anniversary embellishments on Cinderella Castle, I'm still a little awestruck by how boldly and beautifully we transformed our world for the celebration. And our world-famous castle wasn't the only icon getting dressed up for the occasion, with each theme park's icon illuminating the night as a beacon of magic. While most of that 50th sparkle and iridescence will end with the celebration with park icons at Disney's Hollywood Studios, Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park, and Magic Kingdom Park, returning to their usual radiance. Spaceship Earth will continue to shine well into the future with beautiful light displays each night. This is something that we really, really hoped would stay, and I'm so glad that the official announcement has been made that it is staying. It is such a beautiful addition to Walt Disney World. It is just beautiful and mesmerizing, to look at at night Um, and the music that coordinates with it it's I don't have enough words for it you know it's one thing to see it on a YouTube channel or TV but to see it in person is just you're awestruck you really are Um, I can tell a side story about this so when they were installing these For anyone that doesn't know, my family and I, living in Diz, we do work on occasion for Disney for promotional materials for them to use them anywhere. Websites, social media, uh, we have, we're part of an ad that, not even an ad, part of the promotional materials playing in every single resort 
when you watch the resort channel and things to do. And uh, we filmed a portion of a project here. Five in the morning, we're at Epcot. We're standing under Spaceship Earth, and there are cranes up there or lift buckets, and workers are installing these individual lights. It was really cool to watch. We were th right there because that's where, well, the dressing rooms were the men and women's rooms there with a bunch of clothes hanging on racks just underneath Spaceship Earth. So, so cool. I always think of that memory when I discuss the lighting there and may it never go away. Number three, the Disney Fab Five collection. Fun golden sculptures featured 50 beloved characters at each of our theme parks. Um, yes, please. If you were hoping the Disney Fab Five collection would stick around just a bit longer after the celebration, well, you're in luck. I hear they may be in our parks beyond the celebration's official ending for guests to enjoy. They have to stay. What are you going to do with those things? They have to stay. Have to, have to, have to. Do not get rid of those, Disney. Do not get rid of those. This next one is a little bit personal for the simple fact that Disney put out a special license plate for Floridians. And we each got one, Tammy and I. It's beautiful blue. It's the iridescent castle on the left side with the 50th over it. It's like the official logo. Florida in red, um, in yellow letters in a blue background. And it says Disney, Walt Disney World on the bottom. And love it. Never want to give it up. And so this was number four, celebrating with the community. This unforgettable celebration didn't just stay within our gates. Either we drove that very magic out into our communities too. For those of you here in Florida, you've likely seen the beautiful 50th anniversary license plates driving around the state. Thanks to every Floridian who purchased a specialty plate during the celebration, more than $1.5 million has been raised for Make-A-Wish of Central and Northern Florida. Lastly, adding even more magic, there was a lot to revel in during this party, but we didn't just celebrate to honor our first 50 years, we also grew. Epcot continued its transformation, adding La Creperie de Paris, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, just to name a few of our newest theme park additions. Star Wars Galactic Cruiser also took us to a galaxy far, far away, and a Roundup Rodeo Barbecue officially introduced us to the world's first Toy Story-themed restaurant earlier this month. To all who have joined us or helped us celebrate the first 50 years of the Walt Disney World Resort, thank you for being part of the magic. The next 50 years are sure to bring more pixie dust, and there's a boundless collection of memories just waiting to be made. Our Disney story is just getting started. Here's something I haven't talked about yet over in Disneyland. Mickey's Toontown did reopen on March 19th. The reimagined Mickey's Toontown opens in Disneyland Park and at Disneyland Resort, beginning a new era of ways families and young children can play together. This article was written by Kelsey Lynch, Public Relations Director at Disneyland Resort. And at this animated neighborhood, families can explore, play, discover, and unwind together while enjoying new interactive experiences. Returning familiar favorites and the recently debuted attraction, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Disneyland Resort President Ken Potrock hosted a dedication moment in the land, welcoming everyone back to Mickey's Toontown. Ken was joined by Mickey Mouse and the residents of Toontown to celebrate this milestone with the cast members and media. It was a perfectly playful celebration. At the transformed Mickey's Toontown, you get to play in your own way. The environment and experiences in this land were designed to allow guests to see, hear, feel, and interact with one another in various ways. Walt Disney Imagineering also thoughtfully designed the reimagined land to try to remove as many barriers to play as possible, with more open green spaces for gathering in play. Let's explore. There is a new interactive area in grassy spaces. It is called Centennial Park. 
It's the first base you'll see when you enter the land. Centennial Park is anchored by two new interactive play experiences, a beautiful fountain featuring water tables designed for play that invite you to have a sensory experience, plus a nearby dreaming tree with sculpted tree roots for children to crawl around and explore. Goofy's How to Play Yard incorporates a whimsical sound garden where kids can discover new ways to make wacky noises, as well as an all-new elevated clubhouse. Inside Goofy's house, you can help operate a fun, interactive candy-making contraption that only Goofy could imagine. Donald Duck's Pond Donald Duck's Pond will help little ones get the wiggles out and make a splash. Perched in the duck pond, Donald's boat is surrounded by larger-than-life spinning water lilies, balance beams, and rocking toys. Explorers can look into the boat's portals to witness bubbles of fun inside featuring familiar ducklings, Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby. I don't know who Webby is. I grew up with Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Mickey's Toontown is also home to the new family-friendly attraction, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which debuted on January 27th. The attraction features no age height restriction, so families can travel all together into the wacky and unpredictable cartoon world of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. You can go nuts on Chippendale's Gadget Coaster, a one-of-a-kind fun-sized coaster created by the resident tinkerer of Mickey's Toontown, Gadget Hack Wrench. Plus, you can once again enjoy favorite returning attractions like Mickey's House, Minnie's House, and Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin. Classic characters, cartoon cuisine, and whimsical wares. While visiting the whimsical world, you may spot and take photos with Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and their pals, including Donald Duck, Daisy Duck, Pluto, Clarabelle, my lady, my girl, my cow, that's my cow, and Goofy. And for the first time at any Disney park, Pete also makes an appearance as he causes mischief around the neighborhood. Pete, why do you have to do that? Why do you have to be like that, Pete? You're such a troublemaker. Two all-dining locations serve colorful comfort foods and scrumptious snacks that are sure to satisfy kids and kids at heart. Cafe Daisy, which offers food and beverages, via mobile ordering through the Disneyland app. Serves up playful spins on diner classics, including a plant-based option. The Good Boy Grocers Farmer's Market stand offers grab-and-go drinks, snacks, and novelties for a memorable mealtime and while supplies last. Families can pick up the souvenir slushy slipper or perfect picnic basket novelty which includes your choice of three snack-sized items. You can also choose to add on the perfect picnic blanket to go with your basket. Located next to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Engineer, which is the word engine in, in the ear, like the ear on your head, Engineer Souvenirs features a selection of Mickey Mouse and Pals toys, apparel, headwear, and more to choo-choo choose from including the new Mickey Mouse or Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway Remote Control Trackless Train, Engineer Souvenirs offers merchandise mobile checkout, which enables guests to scan and pay as they shop for select items right from their phones using the Disneyland app. If you're about to start planning your next Disney vacation, book it with Your Magical Adventures Await. Claudia is creating Disney Adventures worldwide. She could create a magical adventure to Walt Disney World Florida, any Disney Park worldwide, Disney Cruise Lines, Alani Resort in Hawaii, and guided group vacations with Adventures by Disney. Also, she is a Universal Studios expert. If you book with her, her services are free. Disney pays her to help you create a seamless, magical adventure. Her availability is really unmatched. You can contact her Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Make your magical planner, Claudia Anderson, from Your Magical Adventures Await, 956-455-8049. You can also reach her on Instagram, Claudia Anderson, all one word. For more details, go to livingindiz.com to check out her ad there. 
Now time for our character spotlight this week, and I chose Baymax, and we are going to be all over the place with this. The, the vast amount of characters in the Disney world is amazing, and so I'm talking about Baymax here, and let's dive right into this. Baymax began his existence as a science project created by Hiro. He was originally designed to be a hydro-powered robotic synth former programmed to serve as Hero's personal bodyguard, butler, and chauffeur. However, prior to the project's completion, Hero's father died and the young inventor programmed Baymax's artificial intelligence using the brain Ingrams of his recently departed father. With the thoughts and emotions of Hero's father, Baymax became much more than a robotic bodyguard. He also functions as Hero's best friend in father figure and is by his side nearly every hour of every day. Baymax also feels a deep attachment to Hiro's mother. However, Hiro and Baymax decided it is not in their best interest to inform her mother that her departed husband's memories were used as the basis for Baymax's artificial intelligence. Baymax is amazing. The character meet and greet at Disney was so much fun. He's so cute. He didn't speak, but boy, you could give that big balloon guy a big, great big hug. It was really, really cool. And Big Hero 6 itself, great movie. So many great moments with Baymax in the movie. And of course, me being a healthcare worker and to have him diagnose people was really cool. And he'd come right out and, you know, ask you what number your pain was and show you a um, a chart that we've used before in my practice, you know, where, um, you know, you have the different faces. Are you here? Are you there? Are you there? Are you here with pain? Baymax is pretty cool. And that is our character spotlight for this week. For the first time in forever, and we certainly plan on making him definitely uh, a regular is my longtime friend at this point is Aaron from my, ooh, I almost said my Disney World Fix. It used to be. That's when we met. Sh shame on you. You our, can't leave Roxy out of this, man. I know. It's our Disney World Fix <laughs> with Roxy and Ariel. Oh, yeah. You can't forget Ariel now either. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, what's up, Aaron? Why don't you let everybody know what uh, your, your channel's about and... Um, we can get off on this uh, first subject. All right. So the quick version is I'm just a Disney kid at heart. I just want you to come and experience the love of Disney I have. I mean, I, this, I've said this to my wife. Arguably, there's no one that's an adult that's a bigger Disney kid than me. And I, I still stand by that. So just come experience the eyes of Di the, the look at Disney World through the eyes of a big kid at heart. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and um it's the same thing we do you know <laughs> we love to share disney and and you know came up with this slogan uh in the beginning when we first started the channel and i look back on it time and time again and just say wow i'm like this really does signify what the mission was almost five years ago and it's still the mission which is enjoy disney through the eyes of our family Yep, and uh, such a great phrase. We're proud of that for sure. So you know, we remain quiet for a long time, but it just seems like this is the time to speak up, stand up. You know, we could just continue to ignore and just do what we do, but there's just a lot of it feels like extra hatred out there lately for live streamers and vloggers and. You know, you, you can't group everyone together. And Aaron came across yet another piece of media, a YouTube video, I think, from a channel that has very minimal subscribers, if I'm not mistaken. He had like 300 something. Yeah. But the views were getting pretty good views because the one that we're actually responding to has over 11,000 views. Yeah. So that right there is pretty impressive in, in that right. Um, but you know, the next video he makes, unless he's clever again, you know, we'll get about, you know, 25 views. 
I mean, so. he, he he technically has two that I don't like, but and so the other one that's not the one we're responding to today is he was talking about the closure of Splash Mountain and just the general Disney fandom reaction to it. But that's the story for another day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, I had a tickle in my throat, <laughs> but I'll <clears throat> I'll cut out anything that we need to. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, where do we where do we start? You know, we you know he talks about how. Uh, you know, there's just there's, there's a hatred for vloggers and live streamers, and you know he he talks about. I looked through comments and things like that, and I didn't see anything about us. No, but, I didn't. The only I only saw a handful of channels named specifically, and the ones that I saw named specifically were usually positive comments. Every now and then, you'd find a negative one about a specific comment, and it was usually a Disneylander. Not right. that, that makes any new better, but it was usually not our coast. Right, right. Um, you know, you just can't group people together, but I figured you know, this, you know, you came up with the subject that I thought it was worth talking about. I feel like for me personally that, and if anybody watches, they can attest. And I mean, you've been right there by my side many, many times. Mm-hmm. Um, always respectful. I'm respectful in my own life. Um, I'm very respectful. As a matter of fact, I get criticized for being respectful to people I should not respect. People who disrespect me, I'm still too nice to them, quote unquote. Oh yeah, um, and that's just the way I am. Uh, you know, you really have to put something over on me for me to get fired up enough to lay into you. You know, it's um... really tough to pull my strings like that. So I just say that because we're live. And there are times that I've been live and there are trashy websites out there that are fully critical of live streamers. And, you know, like I've said it again and, you know, I'll probably back off from them for a bit because they don't really get to me. I just assume they don't exist. But now and then things get brought to me and I, you know, and I'm just like, whatever. But, you know, we don't mind calling them out at this point for a little bit for the sake of all of this. Um, but there's been times that I've been accused of being rude to a cast member and that um, has never happened. And they can, they can, they've tried to document things and things like that. And it's not that way. What they're hearing is either a service was supposed to be provided and it's not being provided or the cast member in the situation just isn't educated enough. So sometimes you got to be a little bit forceful in a nice way Um yeah, to a, make them understand exactly a stay in your stay in your ground type way because you know i don't want to say that we do this for a living because each of us have different degrees of how committed we are to the channel yes. but at the same time you know we do make money off of this so it's even if it's a side gig we still make money off of it and it's still part of our living and so it is our job to know the rules so we stay within them and we mm-hmm. can respect the cast members and doing their job and the guests who are there on their once in a lifetime trip so they still have their fun and their memorable experience absolutely they uh you know when you say that too we can kind of sniff out a brand new cast member from one that's been there for a while right i mean if we're getting on a ride with our gimbal or whatever uh you'll never see someone who's been seasoned there question your gimbal or or say you can't film on that ride where we know the rules and we all try to be very polite about it and say, no, no, we are able to do this, you know? And now I'm to the point where I just say, if you want to speak to a manager, please do. Now, if the manager comes and tells me then, okay. I mean, I had, I had the incident. I was the first live streamer to go on space mountain and be told that I could not do it because the rules just changed. So asked for a manager and normally that smooths things over and they're like, Oh no, you're good to go. It, it, it's usually because they're eating. Well, there's sometimes they don't want you to, they think you can't film something or it's a, it's a selfie stick accusation, which we, mm-hmm. we know we can't bring, but in the space mountain situation, it was understood, you know, after talking to the manager who was very nice um, and, you know, she was really, really nice. She was willing to go the extra mile to still allow me to ride it, you know, and I won't go into details with that, but uh, maybe off the air, I'll do that with you. But mm-hmm. <laughs> um, she was, she couldn't have been nicer. And I understood and I thanked her and I came back with the right equipment. 
you know, and at this point, we're really the only we're the only channel that, that does Space Mountain. Uh, so always trying to, I will never try to break the rules and things like that. Um, and very polite. So, um, just to get back to not to get too far away, uh, reel me in, but that was my, you know, that's yeah. it. We're, we're just very respectful and you can tell when, so my moments that I've been called out on is nothing more than knowing the rules and trying to be, you know, try to get them to understand what we're doing here or, yeah. you know, it's just things like that and it's live. So, it would it would be something that would be no different if I wasn't live, and mm. any my, my all my viewers will tell you that that's not the way I am, and you know that's not the way I am. So. Oh, I know. Yeah. And like I, I was watching some of my old streams from uh, pre pandemic era, and I saw several times Casimir stop me. Hey, sir, does that extend? No, it does not. Okay, you're good. And then I even had one. This was like up into the last weeks of the being open before the closure and I had one customer directly stop me going into magic kingdom. So sorry, sir, you had to put that away. And I'm like, it's not a gim, It's not a selfie stick. It's a gimbal. It doesn't extend. And she had to call one of her colleagues over to confirm. And after that, I was on my way. Yeah. Side note, you know, Disney needs to do more education on what's a gimbal and what's a selfie stick. They, mm. I, I just feel like I've never owned a selfie stick, but I've played with a lot of gimbals and I just feel like at a glance, you can already tell what it is. Oh yeah. Because you can already tell because a gimbal you can, or sorry, a selfie stick. You can see that, um, that telescoping, you know, even if it's folded, you can still see that telescopes mm -hmm. gimbal, you know, even ones that, you know, gimbals that the extend like the new Osmo six, it's not obvious unless you actually pull it out. Yes, 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 yes. Right. That now that's one that can get people in trouble because it looks like a gimbal, but it does extend. Mm -hmm. And last night, you and I were on magic carpets together, and the cast member came by, and and she automatically called it a selfie stick. And I'm like, oh mm -hmm. no, 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 this thing is smaller than my hand. She's like, oh, it's getting so hard these days. Yep. You know, but you know, I don't know. Yeah. But she kind of she laughed it off. Said, I, it's getting hard for me to tell anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But but she let it be. Mm -hmm. So I guess I guess back to this person. You know what do you have to say? Yeah. Well, let's see. I did write write down a few notes. So just a couple of quotes. Let's see. At the beginning of it. Well, this is not really related to the influencer thing, but this did rub me the wrong way. You know me. Walt Walt is important to me. So he did say. Did you know there are people that say hi to Walt every time they go to the parks? And then he said, "Pick a better role model than Walt." And <laughs> and then he put some unflattering quotes from Walt from back in the day. I don't know if they're in context or out of context, but it's long been disputed that that's Walt, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, directly about the influencer stuff, he said, "Let's see." He claims Disney flu influencers are entitled when they linger after the park closed. They cause stress to the cast members. Uh, and he in his video he mainly targets the Disneyland TikTok streamers, but this could easily be you know put on to all influences what he was saying as a whole. And I I really don't know how to put it without seeing the video and respond to each individual point. But basically, a lot of us you know we try to be respectful. I mean, one of the points he did mention that I can remember off the top of my head is people is the uh, TikTokers. The ones that, you know, they talk while on the rides. Yep. And I'm just like, no. And I was talking to Roxy about that the other night. I'm just like, look, there is a fine line about knowing with common sense. This is a ride I can talk on. This is a ride I need to keep my mouth shut. And that's just part of the quote unquote job with doing this is knowing the boundaries. Great point. Uh, you know. I, I feel like, you know, I do the same thing and my viewers in chat will say, no, you know, you don't really talk that much on rides. And I think it's, I think I feel the same way uh, subconsciously that, you know, what you can you talk on, you know, what you can't talk on. And if you do, you know, keep it, keep it down a bit. 
uh, when I'm going on pirates and we go down the hill and cannonballs are flying all over the place and you get wet, that's a reaction you're going to make. Oh, I just got wet. <laughs> you know, yeah. when you're with your friends and you laugh and you j- you giggle about it, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, you're on Slinky Dog, of course, you're going to be like, whoa, and, you know, nobody criticizes, you know, the handful of people that are screaming in, in different cars, you know, that that's ruining the ride. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. what I was, I was telling her. Like, look, on Pirates, once you get past the cannonballs, yep. you know, you shouldn't be sitting there talking to your chat just like, oh, look at this. this did you know this? And, no, they're trying to enjoy the ride because that's part of the stream is that they're riding with you. Or right. at least that's how I approach it. Yeah. When I can, I also will take, sometimes it's just busy and you just take what they can give you. And I always dim my screens, which that mm-hmm. that particular person said that, you know, bright screens disturb everybody. I bring my, I bring my screens down all the time. And uh, even, even to the point that if I'm on something like Haunted Mansion, like last night and I'm in the stretching room, um, actually the cast member said to me, you know, dim, dim the cell lights. And I, and I just didn't get to it yet. Um, but I dimmed them down. And when everything goes dark, you could still, even though they dim down, you can still see a little bit in pitch black. So I actually mm-hmm. bring my camera to my chest mm-hmm. so that it blocks whatever's remaining. And then when the lights come back up, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, uh, you know, I, I take it away from my, my chest and I, I always ride that ride with the lights dimmed. Um, mm-hmm. something like star tours. I always sit in the back. There's rides. I sit in the back. I did feel our magic last night. I always sit in the back, you know, so I did the, I do the same thing on, uh, on country bears. I always get in that back row against the wall. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm just observant of my surroundings, like something like country bears. I'll sit in the middle, but I look around and it's, it never really gets that dark in there. Um, and I feel like, okay, we're pretty spread out, so I'm not going to, um, disturb anybody, you know, it's the last thing I want to do is disturb, you know, disturb people. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm in line, I try to be more conscious of sometimes you're just, it's a long day or you're, you're there in the evening and you can't keep an eye on your camera at all times when you're in a line, you know, you, you might be turned away and talking with the company you're with or, you're looking around or you're reading your chat and you have no idea that your camera's focused on somebody, but you're in Disney and the chances of you being on in multiple pictures throughout your experience are very, very high. Um, I, you know, we have to be sensitive to people who have issues with being on camera, but you know, the, I make a little extra effort at, at times when I'm, when it's a tight cue, I try to put the camera up, a little bit and away from people because the last thing I want is the occasionally you get that person that wants to be aggressive towards you. And, you know, like um, one example, and I guess I'll let you talk about this. When I was in, I recently did a night where I started the night. Like I do a lot of times at Epcot. So recently in Epcot, a lot of times I'll start my stream over at spaceship earth and I was in line. It was a night where the queue actually went in and out of the railings a few times. Oh, wow. And yeah, I know weird. So it was a little bit tight, you know, in the sense that, you know, if you're going in one direction and the people to your right and left are going the other directions, you're kind of closer to people. And I stopped and I leaned against the railing and I turned the camera to the sky <laughs> And I could just see quietly the person in front of me say something. I'm going to move over here. And then her dad or whatever was like, why? And she's like, because he's pointing the camera. And I go, clearly, I know you're in front of me. And that's why it's up. It's pointing to the sky. Mm -hmm. And then I just went about my business, you know, because that. That offends me sometimes. So I'm making my effort to. To do this, you know, and you're. You're, you're not obvious you know it's not obvious enough to you what i'm doing but just another moment so you know i mean i i mean i'll admit it i do actively try to not you know point at anybody in particular because you know they're not part of the channel they're just they're having fun it's a family vacation but at the same time it is a theme park there are thousands of people in these parks at any given time it's kind of impossible not to get the camera on people if you're not meaning to get it on at some point so, yeah. I mean, while I don't 
try to get people on camera. At the same time, I don't actively try not to either because it's just a never-ending impossible task. It's a theme park. There's thousands of people around me. Yeah. Yes, it's 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 almost impossible. And um, all we can do is our best. And for people who have issue with it, that's on them. Because most people, it's so funny. It's like we need the people that love us to rise up. Because I would say for every, now, not every one of them are outspoken. But maybe, see what you think about this. For every person that complains or gives you a feeling in the queue or something, then they're not comfortable with you. For every one person that does that, there is probably 300 people that are waving at you as you go by. Um, they're very excited about what you're doing and interested oh, in yeah. questions. There's so much more of that than this little community of that. And people would be, and then it's a, it's the group mentality. People jump in. It all takes is one person like this, this, youtube channel where they say something like this and all the haters jump on you know but there are far more people that that love it and why don't they focus on do they not understand that i get emails and messages and and instagram messages about how many lives that we've touched people that will never get to go to disney people that love disney and need that fix you know, in between vacations, it's, it's, you know, I think it's just a tiny, tiny microcosm of haters. And, uh, and you know, and there's so much more positive. You get some, you know, cast members out of that way too. You'll go into a, like a store and you'll, you know, you just point the camera, you know, it's a theme park. You're pointing it kind of haphazardly because, you know, you're in a theme park. And it just happens to get pointed at the right cast member. They're just like, oh, I don't consent to being on camera. Oops, sorry. Yeah. And yeah. and now I'm going to speak real quickly as a theme park worker, not as a YouTuber. Right, because you are a theme park worker. Yeah, elsewhere. I am a theme park worker myself. You know what so, this, like. so this right here is a statement as a theme park worker. If you do not want to be on camera, you are in the wrong business. Because you're gonna have you're gonna be in the background of thousands of videos, photos, you know it it's gonna happen. It is not a if; it is a when. You are in the wrong business if you don't want to be on camera. And that's yeah. speaking as a theme park worker, not as a YouTuber. But as a YouTuber, I do try to respect those cast members that say, "Hey, I don't want to be on camera." I'm sure that you've come across this before too. This situation where. I will get a sense and it's almost every single time I'm at the park and it's not just once it's multiple times. I will get a sense where a cast members off camera and they're looking at me and I know it's an invite to say hello and put them on camera, mm -hmm. you know, even down to recently I was at flower and garden festival and you know, they're doing their thing. They're cooking and serving in the booths and I got some food at a booth and, they were loving it. And he, and I turned the camera on him. He's like, yeah, we're cooking and all that YouTube. Yeah. And all this other stuff, you know, <laughs> there's so much more acceptance with it. And if Disney didn't like it, we wouldn't be there. And I have a friend that's high up in Disney. That's how I describe her to protect her identity. But mm -hmm. um, she's very influential in the company and she's made a lot of developments that we all use today. And, she herself has told me in her very own home that keep bugging Disney because we're trying to increase our social media. You know, mm -hmm. if, if it was otherwise, she'd tell me, she, she oh, tells yeah. me, she tells me straight up when I have questions about things, I wouldn't advise that she'll say, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. or, or I'm not at Liberty to say, but when she tells me in her own home, you know, you know, that we like this, you know, you know, come forward and, and try to, you know, try to, you know, become media because we want to, we, they just increased their social media department. So yeah. as of last year. Yeah, exactly. The, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that we're basically free advertising for them because people watch us and if they got it, they can, they like, Oh, look at that. I want to go do that. And then they save up money and they go on a multi-thousand dollar vacation and Disney makes money off of it. Yeah. In my mind, in my mind, we're 
I know we're not a quote unquote big channel. I mean, what numbers, you know, designate a big channel, but oh, yeah. 11,000 subscribers is, is still a, a pretty solid following. Uh, and, you know, just for saying where we are, I can tell you now, imagine some of our other friends, you know, who are up to 170 K and, and in between all of that. Oh, I'm God. sure they can speak for it more than I can, but I'm saying, you know, my numbers, because I do have people come to me that say, I moved to Florida because of you. You know, I moved here because of how much fun you have here. And I want to be part of that in my own life. Um, how many vacations do we sell for Disney by showing Disney? Right. You know, all of us. I just think of the couple that hosted you all this past weekend. I was their gateway into the Disney YouTubing world. Yes, you were, and that's amazing, yeah. right? And I, you talk, you talk. I forgot. Did I hear over here that on the live stream or what? I don't remember anymore. But I remember hearing that. I'm just like, oh wow, really? It was on the live stream, and it blew me away. I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. And we are the only ones that they've ever watched. You know, they just. I mean, so much so that they just. I just got a picture sent to me like an hour ago of Adam the Woo. Like mm -hmm. they're over in Epcot and they met Adam the Woo and they don't, they don't even know who he is, <laughs> you know, but Neil knew. And that's only, that's the only way that they knew. Oh you know? yeah. Oh, that's right. No still, that's right. They're still here this week, aren't they? Yes, they are. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to stay over at Fort Wilderness tomorrow night. One more time uh, with them oh, nice. uh, tomorrow. Cause they're still here. So, should be fun. I think we're going to do a live stream tomorrow and uh, we're going to go attack the St. Patrick's Day dessert. So anyone watching this, this, I mean, listening to this podcast, uh, this will be well after it happens. But go back on the live stream for Friday, March 17th. Um, well, it won't even be marked that. It'll be a few days after that, that it's released. But anyway, we're going to go try this new massive St. Patrick's Day uh, mint chocolate milkshake over at Beaches and Cream. So the stream will really enjoy that, <laughs> I'm sure. Me and, Rock, me and Rock will be nearby at Epcot, so. Oh, you will be. You will be. I know. Yeah. I don't know. I was wondering. Well, I, I was wondering about that, and I don't think we'd have enough time to jump in to to see harmonious because um, we're going to eat first and then and then do that so that'll probably run into harmonious so we won't we won't really rush things this time but uh do we have anything else to say about this this particular topic uh, the only other thing i want to point out is he got on i want to i, I want to point out the point where he was talking about lingering guests after park closed call stress on CN. Yes. Point that that, out. that really read me the wrong way because you know it's not just influence that are influencers that are doing that. That's you know regular guests who are there on their once in a lifetime vacation there too who linger after the park closes while the stores are still open. Sometimes even if the store is, stores are closed because they're getting those last photos or their last videos or they're just enjoying the quiet atmosphere. And everyone does it. It's not just influencers. So for him to see all the influencers in this and how it causes ca cast members stress, I'm just like, you know, the cast members who have their nighttime work are more than likely already at work within the lands because those are clear by that point of guess. Yeah, great point. And the stores, once they close, those doors are shut. They can get started on their nighttime work as well because the guests are not in there. It's it's only the hub and Main Street itself that has to wait until the last guest walks out of the gate. Yeah, I'm I, I love I love this subject. I love talking about it because you know, just to add to what you've said, people sometimes they can't see what we see on the stream. And there have been times where I've had to point this out. So this subject started to come up for me when I started doing the World Showcase walkthrough, people would come in to chat. Hey, what time does the park close? Oh, it closed at 9. Okay, why are you walking around at 9.45 uh, in the evening then? And, you know, I said, well, the stores are still open. Restaurants are open. We're not holding anyone up by being here a little bit longer. 
and I watch my clock. Uh, my World Strike X walkthrough is way more calculated than anybody even knows. I start. I told you a little bit about it, mm-hmm. and it's it's to start where I start. I know the countries I want to feature the most, and there are some in betweens. In between, you know, there's a walk a little. There's a little bit of a walk in between some things like China and Germany has quite quite the walk through there to walk to go from one to the, the other. And I just speed my walk up, take my time in China, speed to Germany, you know, slow it down, speed up. And all the while, I'm looking at the clock and I'm watching. And when I get to Canada, it's usually just about ten. If I have a few minutes before ten, I'll pop up into Canada, show the waterfall for a minute or two and then we're on our way and the night is over and when we get no by the way you know this when we're walking through france and things like that there are several tables still being occupied by people eating (coughs) excuse me and when we close out the stream or i go back to spaceship earth and i'm showing spaceship earth and i'm letting them enjoy that for a few minutes what they may not see There are so many people to my right taking, like you said, taking pictures, taking photos, sitting around it. I would say of all the times I've been to Disney and it's been hundreds. I've probably been the last person out of that park knowingly a handful of times. I'm very conscious of it. And even if we're in the Emporium or this or that, we're really never the last people out. There's always more people that are there. So it looks like we're lingering. But just us being there isn't holding anybody up. And with a job like that, working at Disney or the Emporium, you don't look at the clock and say, yep, park closes at 10. We're done. We get to walk. If we're lucky, we'll walk off at 10. Heck no. You know you're going to be there. You I mean, you're you're a team member elsewhere. I mean, what do you what do you guys think? If your shift ends at 10, are you thinking, yeah, we'll probably be out of here about 11. Like you have a set time still in your mind. So what are your thoughts, Aaron, about that as a team member elsewhere where your shift ends at 10? You're not saying, man, 10.05, I'm out. Oh, no. Let's see. It it depends on the night. You know, there's nice, uh, of course, you know, the park, if the park, we'll just say 10 o'clock for easy math in, in this. But if the park closes at 10, there's nice that, yeah, 10 o'clock is going to be the last guess. We can do our closing stuff and get out of here within about 20 minutes. And we'll be out. But most nights, there's still guests in line when the park closes. So you can bet on either going up to your end time on your scheduled shift, which is, you know, 30, 45 minutes past the scheduled park close, or you're going to go over that. You're not done until the last guest is done. Right. This is a good question I've never been able to ask. So. What's what's the mindset? You can't speak for everybody, but no. the good the good team member, the good cast member, what's their mindset where it is the end of the night and there's a few lingering guests in the store or whatever? Are you just kind of chill about it? Like, you know, this happens every night. They'll be done when they're done. And or is it like, come on, man, let's go. I got to go. You know, well, I'm not going to name names, obviously, but. You know, the average, you know, team member, cast member, from my experience, is inside their head, at least, going, come on, I want to go home, I'm tired. Yeah, we all do that. That's natural, right? But outward front word to the guests, of course, we're going to say, no, take your time, we're here for you. Right, And this is the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that in my own job, too. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm looking at my clock, I got to get to the next patient, you know, and I'll say to a patient, I'm like, I'm like, nope, take your time, take rest as long as you need to. And I'm saying, all right please get up in like the next five seconds. <laughs> I got to go. Yeah, I, and I don't mean that as a stab at anyone at my work. I love my coworkers, but, but we're in the end, we're still human. And, and, you know, as much as we may love our jobs in the end, it's still a job and we want to go home as soon as we can and enjoy the rest of our day or our night or go to bed if it's late. Cause there's some shifts that end at two o'clock in the morning because of a, a private event. But, you know, it. We're just human. We want to go home as soon as we can. But at the same time, we know we're theme park workers. We're we're there until the last guest is out of our area, and we're clear to start our end of the day routine. There, you said it all. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that was a good way to answer it. You know, we are all human. 
we all want to end our jobs and, and at the end of the day and get home as quickly as possible and leave the workplace. But at the same time, you know your role and that's to be expected every night. And it's going to happen. People are on vacation. People want to milk every moment they can. And mm-hmm. that's just the nature of the job. But to the point, we don't we don't linger and keep people there. And I'll say this, my friend again, that's high up in Disney, I went to her because I was starting to be harassed by people in chat. And uh, personally, I was harassed um, on Facebook by a person or two. And um, it was upsetting at first. And then, you know, I had to let all that go. But I asked her point blank about the situation. And you know what she told me? Hmm. She said, and I told her, my viewers love seeing the World Showcase in that final hour that I'm allowed to be there, it means the world to a lot of people. And she said, you know what she said to me? She goes, you keep doing it. She said, that's, you know, that's great. Keep doing it. She said, yeah. be, be conscious of the sweepers when they're, you know, when, when, you know, if they're starting to move towards, you know, you be conscious of that, but you keep doing what you're doing. That's coming from Disney. So, yeah, I mean, I had the same experience, and we both know my style of doing the walkouts different, and mine is perfectly, it's meant to be perfectly timed to two pieces of music, so I'm constantly mute, moving to stay on track with this music, but, you know, usually, if you look at all my walkthroughs, when I'm going through friends, I mean, I try not to point it inside the restaurant to respect people eating their dinner, but sure. sometimes a shot slips through, and you'll see people in there still eating most of the time. And park sweep is not going to happen until they're done eating. Yes. I, when I go through this specifically, if anybody doesn't know, you know, at in France, it's all glass on the outside. It's almost like a greenhouse with clear windows, how it kicks out from the main building. And I'm sure that I show people sitting there, but it's not in detail or paused. It's literally a blur of people as you're walking by. There's times that that gets caught or there's times it doesn't. But I almost I feel like I almost always say, oh, there's still some people in there. And it's for people to hear about that. Or I'll say, oh, wow, there's still so many guests. You know, oh, there's people behind me. You know, there's always people around. And we're just some of those people that don't milk it like that. And to my to the last point on that, there's also been times I've been one of the very last guests on Main Street getting that, you know, coveted picture of empty main street at the end of the day and i i know one of the managers at magic kingdom i mean i don't know her no super personally but i i know her she knows me and we hold conversations and i would say we're quite friendly towards each other and i'll sit there and i'll talk to her for a good 10 15 minutes was that who you were talking to the other night when we were there uh yeah i think it was yeah and so it I enjoy talking to her and she enjoys talking to me and she loves seeing me. She even said, Hey, do you want a picture of empty mainstream? And she offered to take the picture. And I'm just like, yeah, see, I mean, of course they want to get about their end of the day duties, but at the same time, they're not going to rush anyone out because they know what the parks mean to people. Yeah. See that that's great. I'm glad you shared that. So hopefully we made our point on that and uh you know maybe we'll remain silent for a little while now so (laughs) (laughs) the uh, the very last thing i'm going to say on this sure is is the guy who did this which i'm going to leave it a little bit of a pause here so you can cut this out if you want to the the channel's name if y'all want to look it up his name is hello it's brian if you want to look up the video yourself but to Brian himself, if you want to talk about it, sure, I'll, I will have a conversation with you. I will set it up. We can have a conversation on my channel and do a at-home stream and talk about it. But I, I don't think you're based in reality here. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I think he just took his own experience in watching and took a few people and, you know, formed his opinion that way. And you you just can't group everybody that way. And I read some of the comments and there were people coming to the defense of us in general saying not all live streamers are bad. Not all vloggers are bad. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's like anything else. It's, you know, a few bad apples will just upset the whole cart. 
Oh, yeah. And I'm conscious of that stuff. I never want to be not, you know, it mean, you know, who knows? It could take one blogger causing a big scene or something like that in a Disney park for them to say, that's it. We're shutting it down. Oh, yeah. You know, and I don't want to be that person. No, I don't want to be the first person that causes that either. I don't want to be that person ever. So, yeah, uh, I would say, you know, why why protect this, you know, YouTube channel? It's up to people listening. If you're listening, well, obviously you're listening. If you're listening to me, listening to this, if you feel that your opinion is of you know if you think what he's saying or you watch the video and you feel like he's gravely wrong certainly leave some comments on he does reply he does reply so feel free and you know support yeah. the live streamers yeah <laughs> if you want don't, to yeah just remember don't harass you can respond don't harass <laughs> yeah be polite about it like we are That'll do it for another week of the Diz Pod. Make sure you check us out on the Swell app. That's S-W-E-L-L. We broadcast and drop five-minute podcasts throughout the week with the most consistent one being the post-live stream walkout from wherever we live streamed during the week. And you can usually count on those within the next 30 minutes of going off the air. And again, we, we drop... Every Monday, 9 a.m., a full-length podcast right here where you're listening to. And we hope you continue to follow and enjoy. If you want to contribute in any way, you can do that with right on Spotify with ad-free sponsorship. You can also check us out over at YouTube, our channel Living in Diz. And in the description of any video there, go to the live streams and the replays and click on those and you will find links for becoming a Diz Club member and also becoming a Patreon. There's so much to see over there. Check out our website, livingindiz.com. So many great things going on over there. You want to check that out. All you want and need to know about the members of the channel, you can sign up for our email list there so you're alerted anytime we have news. With an extended schedule of our live streams, It's a three live stream lineup. Those are typically updated every single Saturday's morning. And please send us some questions. We'd love to read them on the air here at livingindiz at gmail.com. For Mushu, Jacob, Jillian, Tammy, I'm Corey from Living in Diz. Thank you so much for being dedicated to our family, our channel, our podcast. Thank you so much for allowing us to be your ticket to Disney. And we'll see you in the parks.